So what targeted therapies are available? Um, fortunately, there, there are two very effective targeted therapies. Uh, one is called seprocatinib, and the second one is called presetinib. Uh, these two drugs are very similar in terms of effectiveness and side effects. They're pills. Uh, they're usually taken every day. Now, I think some of the basic principles that, um, that are important to remember is that while targeted therapies can very effectively shrink tumors and keep the cancer under control for some time, um, they cannot get rid of cancer completely. So it's not a treatment we use for a cure. Um, and, and I emphasize this because I've had some patients who say, why can't they just take the pill and not um, you know, have surgery or radiation? I mean, and I'm talking about patients who have early stage cancers. And that is because targeted therapies by themselves cannot cure um, a, a cancer, unfortunately. Uh, the other point I'll make is that their targeted therapies are usually taken continuously as long as side effects are manageable and, uh, and the treatments are keeping the cancer under control. Um, I've also had situations where um, these targeted therapies work so well and the tumors uh, no longer are visible on a scan. So um, I've had patients who said, who said to me, you know, why can't I just stop taking it? There's no cancer on the scan. Um, but, but these treatments do have to be taken continuously in order uh, to keep the cancer under control. How well do these treatments work? Um, I know that based on my own patients that, uh, that many patients are looking at the presentations of clinical trials. Um, many I know that are even looking at the papers uh, of these clinical trials themselves and have questions about the various terms that are used in clinical trials. So I thought I would take this opportunity to explain some of these terms. Now, these numbers come from clinical trials of patients with uh, stage four lung cancer, so it doesn't really apply to patients with early stage lung cancer. So the first term that is often used uh, to measure how well a treatment um, works, especially targeted therapies, um, is this thing called response rate. And, uh, and what that is referring to um, is is among the patients who receive the drug, um, the percentage or rate of patients who had a major tumor shrinkage and usually defined as more than 30% uh, shrinkage. So for uh, sephrocatinib and prosetinib, that number is around 60 to 90%. Now, this does not mean that for a particular patient, their cancer is going to shrink by 60 to 90 percent. Uh, what this number means is that if 100 patients with very similar cancers, similar uh, situations receive um, the same drug, 60 to 90 of the 100 patients will have a major shrinkage. The next term uh, that is uh, used a lot is um, is disease control rate. And here we're asking the question of, among the patients who received the drug, what is the percentage of patients who had a major shrinkage or stability of their cancer? And I would say uh, stabilization of cancer is also very important, um, especially if a patient has no symptoms from their cancer, if we can keep their cancer uh, from growing for a long time, that would also be a good, uh, good outcome. So for these drugs, um, that number is around 90%. So we can see that for the majority of patients who take these drugs, they'll have either good shrinkage of their cancer or, or stability. Now, progression-free survival refers to the time that it takes um, from or took from initiation of treatment until cancer progression. 
Um, and in the trials of these two drugs, that was around 16 to 20 months. Now, please remember that these are average numbers and there is always a range. So there uh, are patients whose cancer will progress much sooner than this number. And some patients will have cancer control for longer than uh, this number. So it's important to remember when that when you read these numbers that these are really um, average numbers. What are the side effects of these treatments? Um, so there are many side effects that are common, but typically manageable. Um, and these include uh, gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, constipation. Um, some people may have uh, some fatigue, swelling, some lab abnormalities, but usually these are um, usually manageable with supportive care and, and medication. There are uh, side effects that are not very common, uh, but could be serious. And these are um, lung inflammation, also um, referred to uh, as pneumonitis. Uh, so that's the medical term we use, but it's inflammation of the lungs themselves um, by the drug, um, which uh, usually is reversible when we stop the drug. Serious infections can also occur, um, usually related to the abnormal blood count. So again, these don't happen very commonly, but, uh, but it would be good to um, keep them in mind. Now, what happens uh, after the first drug stops working? So for example, if you uh, went on to ciprocatinib and it stops working, should we try prosetinib, which is the other drug I mentioned? But we don't really know if going from one drug to the other really works. I personally um, don't think it'll work very well, uh, mainly because these are very similar drugs. Now, most patients will need chemotherapy at some point, um, and chemo can be quite effective, and the side effects can be manageable uh, with good supportive care. Um, so I wouldn't discount chemotherapy. Immunotherapy uh, usually is not very effective uh, in red positive lung cancer, so it's not something I would use right away. And uh, unfortunately, there is a lot of work in developing newer drugs, and two that I will uh, highlight are PPX0046 and LOXO260, um, and, um, and these uh, look promising but not commercially available. 